There's a chill in the air as the weather reminds us it's still hockey season for one final series of Maryville Saints hockey. It's the Fighting Illini. It's the Saints. This is Maryville Saints hockey. Welcome to the Frank's Red Hot pregame show. I'm Todd Panula riding solo here this evening as it'll be the Illinois Fighting Illini against your Maryville Saints. It's been kind of an up and down roller coaster the last few weeks for the Maryville Saints as they have had uh, some wins, some losses, some tough games, some good results, but it's been kind of a back and forth affair as uh, they, they ended up splitting a series a couple weeks ago against uh, the Missouri State. They did the same against the University of Central Oklahoma. That was a big win, a six to one win in the Friday game but then kind of a really disappointing result in the Saturday game in which they fell eight to nothing. And then a rather disappointing performance to which Coach Hogan was definitely not having any of what the players were putting out there. It was a four to one loss against the University of Mary and that was last Thursday. So it's been an extended break. There weren't any games last weekend for the Saints. So they've had some extra practice time, a little bit more time to ruminate on what's gone on so far, but they look to pick up some stuff here this weekend and try to get a series sweep over the University of Illinois. Looking at tonight, it is going to be the Illini against the Saints. Both of these teams come in with basically polar opposite records. Maryville comes in at 17 and 10. They've got a mediocre home record at seven and six but they're looking to turn things around there but the illinois fighting line i are four 13 and oh and they only have two road wins on the season so it hasn't necessarily been the greatest of years for illinois as they have had trouble getting their their wheels going after the covid seasons that happen you see there the uh, records and the matchups 34 points for maryville uh, the offense is just hugely disparate. Almost, uh, more than a 60 goal difference there in terms of Maryville has scored 94. Uh, Illinois has only scored 31 this season. They've allowed almost as many as Maryville has scored. Maryville's defense, Coach Hogan would like it to be a little more steady, but you still have a positive 21 goal differential and that makes the difference. Despite some disappointing results, the rankings still have Maryville at a really good position as they head towards postseason play as the Maryville Saints come in with a ranking of number nine on the season. So the Saints are still set up pretty good as we head towards the national tournament, but it is going to be how they finish, not only whether or not they can get some wins against Illinois, but in what fashion they get as well because it all boils down to goal differential uh, for lack of a better word style points for the wins that you get so maryville needs to really kind of buckle down and focus on getting results here tonight there are going to be some new players for the maryville saints that will be playing tonight a couple players called up from the division two level it's going to be sawyer lonesdale and logan mueller you see mueller was pretty much doing very well 26 points and 12 goals in 25 games Lonesdale a little bit more of a steady player not quite as high flying on the offensive end but still doing more than enough to get a call up here as he has got eight points in nine games Mueller with a rather impressive game winning goal as well not only will it be two new players but we've got a player returning in Cameron Ware He's been out a little while as uh, Maryville's been kind of trying to massage the injury bug out of the equation, but he's played 20 games. He's not necessarily been able to get his offense flowing the way that he would have liked this season, but he is definitely a player that this team is going to need to count on as they head in towards postseason play. Speaking of players that Maryville is going to have to count on, they've got three key players that are going to be huge, not only for the rest of the season, but definitely for tonight. TJ Prexler, Jack Harrison, and Charche, Jake Charche, uh, all three are extremely dynamic players as they, they get things going on the offensive end. They're very good on the stick handling, very sound in possession, but they can create, they can create energy, 
and they are definitely dynamic players that the Saints uh, managed to count on, not only for goals, as we see Sarche came up with a big goal against uh, Liberty to cut into their two to nothing lead back at the time, but just overall, they play in all three phases and they are definitely leaders on this team. Assists big time in favor of TJ Prexler and Jack Harrison is one of the offensive leaders and shot blocking galore for the captain. Let's look at the starting goaltender for tonight. It's going to be Ed Coffey in between the pipes. Who else? As Ed seems to get most of these Friday starts and he's done very well in 15 games. Uh, well, excuse me, in 18 games, he's got a 10 and five record, saving just a little over 90% of the shots against. Four shutouts to his credit. He'd like to get another one here tonight as we transition over to the starting lineups. Obviously, we know that we're going to have coffee in between the pipes and guarding his blue line is going to be a rather stout defensive pair coffee and net on defense it'll be timon prexler on one side guarding the other half of the blue line is going to be garrett hunter moving up towards the forward line on left wing it'll be chad McElwain. centering this top line will be the captain jack harrison and on right wing one of the saints leading scorers in T.J. Prexler. We get a look at some of the lines and the combinations there. You see Mueller and Lonesdell down on the fourth line, but we'll see how much playing time they can get. Obviously, the Saints would like to get out to an early lead and get some of those guys and their bottom six forwards a little bit of extra time heading into the later stages of this season. So it's teams heading in opposite directions. The Saints know that they have postseason aspirations. The Fighting Illini are just trying to close things out in a strong manner. We'll see who comes out on top. We'll take a break for your national anthem. When we come back, we will have the puck drop between the Fighting Illini and the Saints. This is the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support you Honored to give back to community charities and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money back guarantee and exchange policy. Saints Hockey Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association. This is a team that's really held its own. Top 10 in ACHA Division I hockey. Now it's a new season. New pack of dogs. New blood in the group. But that's what makes this team successful. They don't dwell on the past. They keep moving forward. They keep pushing, keep striving. 
until they reach that ultimate goal. And you better believe these new guys, they want the same thing. They're ready, they're hungry, and they're just waiting to be unleashed. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center here in Chesterfield, Missouri. Both teams have their starting lineups out on the ice. The official has gathered at center and we're about to drop the puck. It's a hockey night here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Hunter comes in, flings one towards goal and we have our first shot and save for Ben Mazurik who comes in at three and seven. 4.98 goals against, and a save percentage of just over 88%. Saints are gonna lead their starting line out there. Only eight seconds came off the clock, so no need to go for a line change just yet. McElwain swings one into the corner. Harrison continues it on. Prexler has it at the goal line. Hunter at the blue line, and now here's Timon Prexler. High shot, knocked down, might have gone off of Harrison, but never got its way on goal. Saints keep it in the zone, though. Here's Hunter, turning around, but flopped a pass in towards the middle of the ice, and nobody was there. May have been deflected as it came awkwardly over towards the blue line. Saints will reset back in their own zone. McElwain has it. Touches it up the boards, and now here's a two-on-two -two attack. Prexler comes in, Harrison with some interference, and the shot gets all the way through. Harrison couldn't gather the rebound, though. Good opportunity there for T.J. Prexler. I'm going to say that that one was not on goal, though. It's, it's only that initial shot up on the board. That one is deflected up and into the bench. 
So we'll get a neutral zone faceoff just outside the Illinois line. Both teams have changed their lines. Saints put out their second line of Zlati Adams and Charche. Charche, one of our players to watch for. Obviously one of the keys to the game here this evening for the Saints is gonna be to get off to an early start. Just from a pure record standpoint, you have to figure that the Saints know that they're the better team, but you can't necessarily go into a game thinking that. You have to come out, you have to establish, establish yourself early and don't allow the Illini to get anything rolling. Illinois flings one up towards center, gloved down and carried on. Couldn't do too much with it though. And now Charche brings it in on the offensive end. One on three, he has to peel back as the Saints were changing things up. Tapped in by Ware. Saints trying to get something established in the offensive zone. Right now, McLean has it touched up. Bonnet throws it over to the far point. Corpse with a shot, ricochets around a couple times, and finally it settles down, and Missouri will cover it up. Nice little flurry of activity for the Saints, but they just couldn't get anything clean there. There's a lot of bodies in front of the net right now. Last series of the 22-23 season. Saints trying to close things out strong before they begin postseason play. Centering pass, they were looking for McLeod. Ware had his stick lifted. Kolb comes back. Up to Bulkdorf. Into the Saints zone, jabbed along here to the near side. Cobb comes over. Deflected out as Edwards clears the zone. Chasing it down for the Illini. Cobb comes back. Up the wall, Illinois getting it over the blue line. Hunter is back, but it slips away from him. Eddingen. Coming in on the four check. Turcotte takes a big hit right to the chest. Got the puck out. It's all the way back in now, but he's gonna be feeling that one. Saints go tic-tac-toe, and here comes Turcotte in on the near wing. He's got some space. The angle was shut down, and the shot was stopped as Missouri comes up with his third save of the evening. Overall, a good start here for the Saints. They've managed to get a handful of shots in on goal. Some of the opportunities were knocked out and ricocheted around like a pinball, but overall, it's been a solid run of play. Hunter gets it off the faceoff, shot in, pad save. Missouri didn't know too much about where it went, but he slammed the door shut and the puck did not squirt in behind. They're gonna say the face off will come from the far side this time. Saints have won all the games against Illinois this season. It was a split last year with each team getting a victory, but Saints won two to one in a shootout and then eight to nothing back on November 4th and 5th, respectively. Four minutes played. Saints have four shots on the board. Harrison comes up the near wing from the circle, drives it towards the net. Missouri handles that. No rebound available. So we'll have another face off. It's interesting to see the Saints taking some of these shots from just below the dot. Obviously, going with the thought process that um, any shot is a good one, and I won't argue that. But you would think they would try to set something up a little bit closer to the middle of the ice. 
Zloty knocks the stick out of his opponent. That one went flying. Referee says it's all right. McDonald, or uh, McDonough, I should say, wasn't too pleased with it. Back to the point. Bonnet flings it over. MacArthur comes up, tries to pinch in, gets the puck as he dragged it back to the blue line. Dismissed over on the far side. Charche has his stick lifted along the half wall as they scrum for it. On it, or uh, Jackson White, excuse me, flipped one towards goal. That was another easy cover for the goaltender of the Illini. Both teams going to get some fresh legs out there with 15 17 left to go here in the first. McLeod wins the draw. Edwards hands it back. Shot from the point went wide. Quickly out in front. They were looking for where, but the pass came just a bit too quick. And it's all the way back down in the Saints zone. Turner gives it over to Edwards, but intercepted by Anderson. Flip towards goal, and now Coffey gets a little bit of work. First shot on goal for the Illini. A little over five minutes in. Illinois, you're needing, needing a little bit more on the offensive end, but the Saints have pretty much hemmed them in thus far. Face off one. Dorian gives it over the far side. They work it down low in behind the net, looking for Mateen. But Veev handed it over to Andante. Now they dig in. Just north of the corner boards. Corpse was almost tripped up. And then Adante went after him. Puck was well out of position, but no penalty. The referees kind of letting them go so far in the early going. And as long as it goes both ways, that's more than satisfactory. 14 minutes and change left to go as the cross ice pass comes from Mueller. Ware stopped it at the blue line, but then his pass towards Hunter was well off the mark. Turcotte is back, hands it over to Hunter. Now it's time in Prexler. Up the wall for Mueller, taps it on, and here's Turcotte racing in now. Lonesdale. Lonesdale drops it back. Hunter, now time in Prexler, but the pass was off the mark and escapes the zone. Hunter from the far side, in through Turcotte. He deflected it in and tries to chase it down. McDonough sends it over to the far side. Lonsdale is there for the Saints. Taken away by McLean, and the Saints have it back in their own zone. Quick passing from Maryville as they're going to do a change on the fly. Timer Prexler gains the zone, and then it just slipped away at the last moment. He runs into McDonough. Back to the point for TJ Prexler. They exchange places. TJ was knocked off the puck along the wall. MacArthur has it back at his own blue line, skates it up, and then soups one deep inside the zone. Chased down by Bogdanov. Bogdanov. Knocked the stick away, got the puck in the process. McElwain picked up the twig, tries to take it back. Midlinski couldn't clear the zone. Shot on by TJ Prexler. Back to MacArthur, and then that escapes. Cross ice they go. White back to MacArthur. Out to TJ Prexler. In the middle to McElwain. Harrison was joining the play as well, but. Helfer had control for Illinois. White quickly to MacArthur. Backhands it around. McElwain ties up his man. Couldn't get the puck, though. Cobb gets it out to center. MacArthur is there. Harrison plays it off the wall to himself. Saints doing another change on the fly. MacArthur tries to cross the red line. He was stood up. Here's Matt Vive going the other way for Illinois. He hits the brakes. Taken down from behind. MacArthur with a little poke check. Harrison picks up the loose change. 11.40 left to go. Harrison 
flops it down the ice. That wasn't anywhere close to the red line, though. I think he was hoping that might hit some snow on the boards, but icing is the call with 11.37 left in the first. It is beach night here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. So in case you see any of the fans walking across the, uh, the glass with some lays around their neck, that is the reason. Adds a little bit of color on a rather uh, dreary February day here in the St. Louis area. Although I say that, and the sun was actually out today, but it was still rather chilly. Lovely Midwest weather. It's close to 70 one day and then 40 degrees the next. So the stoppage is going to put the face off inside the Maryville zone. 11 18 left to go here in the first. Saints are able to get it out of the zone. They come in on the offensive end. Charche twists it around. McDonald gets it up into the neutral zone, but Bonnet is there for Maryville. Deflected in by Adams, avoiding a potential icing call. That would have been close. He was right around the red line. Always depends on the official if they're going to give you that kind of buffer zone or not. Corpse with a nifty little move to get around the defender. Has to do it again. Finally just gets it out of the zone. Ware was tracking back. Illinois puts it in the offensive end, but too far out of the reach of Cobb. Far side now for Timon Prexler. Ware skates it over the red line and the blue. Cross corner dump in. Picked up by Edwards. He plays it off the boards, but... Ettingen was in the way. Simon Prexler has been very active on the offensive end. Here's McLeod. His shot goes well wide. He exchanges places with Simon Prexler, but Edwards has it in the corner. Into the skates of Cameron Ware. Back to Edwards as he carries towards the far corner. Peels away from pressure. Ware is digging in in front, but McLeod can't find him. He had too many... Defenders to worry about of his own. Good pressure here from the Saints, though. Good puck possession. Illinois doing their best to get physical. Kind of a blind backhanded pass from Edwards. Went off the side of the cage. Edwards twisted around to Ware. Filtered through to McLeod. Shot was blocked. Krexler pinches in, as does Hunter. Hunter with the save, he's got it in the high slot, shot, might have nibbled off the glove, and then Ware puts it off the side of the goal. Saints still buzzing in the offensive end. Here's Colt Corpse, wrist shot to the blocker side, almost deflected, but it still ends up wide. Hunter drops it back, Corpse with the tap pass. Here comes Lonesdale, wrist shot, pad save, it's loose in front, but there's nobody in white, and Illinois will clear. Turner is back, hands it off to Corpse. Gets the return feed. Mueller taps it through to Turcotte. Lone still to Turcotte again. Turcotte driving in, luring that shoulder. The shot was turned away. There's a broken stick on either side of the goal. 8.25 to go here in the first. It's been a very active first period for the Saints. Only seven shots on goal thus far, but they have been in the offensive zone almost the entire time. Mueller drives the net. The whistle goes. The referee doesn't have his arm up in the air, so I think they're going to just call it a collision with the goaltender and uh, the stoppage was for that. So the face off will come out of the zone. 
8-12 to go in the opening frame. Saints win the draw. MacArthur brings it in on his off wing. Centers it, and the shot from TJ Praxler was deflected over the goal. Praxler and Harrison trying to dig in. McIlwain is on the forecheck as well. Ooh, Jackson White had Cobb lined up, but he got rid of that puck. And then a big check from Bogdanov taking out Praxler in front of his own bench. Here's Cobb. Trying to get a shot off. Still just the one on goal for Illinois. Medlinski had it off. Bogdanov to the far side. He was looking for Alp. Instead, the Saints get it out. Bogdanov throwing his weight around as he took Harrison into the boards. Tracking it down is McDonald. Can't clear it. Here's Mueller. The wrist shot. Score! Welcome to D1. Logan Mueller, first game for Coach John Hogan, and he puts one in the back of the net. Logan Mueller with his first goal of the season for the D1 Dogs. 13th overall. He gets that at 12.51 to put the Saints up one to nothing. Illinois dumps it in. 13 minutes and change gone here in the first period. Turcott giving the business to Atticus Helfer. Helfer slides it up the wall. That one pops up in the air, and now I believe uh, Max Gaudet has it over on the bench. So we'll get a whistle. And Illinois getting very feisty, understandably so. They've had an incredibly difficult season. We mentioned 4-13-0-1. So that, that one was obviously the Maryville loss to which uh, the game did go to a shootout, but Maryville was victorious. But it has just been tough sledding for coach Chad Castle and his team. So Mueller assisted by Lonesdale and MacArthur. Time of the goal was 12.51. Saints push the reset button. They get it to Charche at center. He stick handles through a couple defenders and then backhands one off the end wall. Picked up by Anderson. He tries to get it out on the near side. McLean was unsuccessful as it was swatted down by Bonnet. Anderson tried to reverse it again. This time it is cleared out, but the Saints have it back at center ice. Charche goes cross corner, keeps it in just barely. That one ticked off the top of the glass. Illinois looking for an escape route, won't find it yet. Now McLean gets it out, hands it off to Dorian. He stick handles in, but is surrounded by three defenders. Cobb trying to get away. Edwards says, no, I'll take that away from you. This will avoid an icing call as it took a favorable bounce off the wall on the far side. Ware hits the brakes, but just out of his reach, trying to gain control of that puck. Here's Cobb crossing the red line for Illinois. Passes, and now here's Widlinski. The shot was blocked. Widlinski looking for Bogdanov. Saints go cross ice. Edwards gains the red line. So no icing here. Where is in? Cameron Ware doing a very good job pressuring just about everything. Now White 
Got a little too cute with the stick handling. Eventually forgot about the puck at the blue line, so it trickled over. MacArthur comes back in. Harrison will chase. He's in a race with Helfer. Harrison digs in, keeps it alive. McElwain shuffles it along. Kept in nicely by Hunter. He tosses one towards the circle, but it was knocked down. TJ Prexler has control of it, but it is scraped away by Matt Vive. Delayed offside, so McElwain has to come back. That'll allow Illinois to come up through the middle. Ettingen off the dashers, back to himself. Plays one through the middle, nobody there in orange. Matt V with a shot, stick save. Coffee just calmly turning that one over into the corner. Good rebound control. Here comes TJ Prexler on a rush. He's got a man on the back door, but way too many defenders to try to get it across. Into the middle, off the body of McElwain, and the shot is stopped by Missouri. 3.41 left to go here in the opening period. Saints lead one to nothing. Illinois won the draw, but couldn't do anything with it. Turcock got a piece of it. Spencer Turner comes up from the blue line and activates. Illinois, oh, they had Colt Corpse coming at him. The big man went over the top as he was trying to take down Patrick McDonough. But now we're going to have a penalty. And the Illini are going to the box, so the Maryville Saints will have a power play on a slashing call. Now the Saints are already up one to nothing. Nick Anderson goes to the box on the slash. Maryville's power play has been up and down right now, scoring at just under 23% as this shot from Jackson White goes wide. Simon Prexler back to White straight away, now to the far side. Adams dusted off, the shot was knocked down initially. McLeod back out. Putting it into the middle, it was knocked down initially. Time and Prexler back to White. Here's Adams, his shot was knocked away. It's at the blue line, but held in. White off the dashers. Adams, near side for Prexler. Shot blocked off the leg of Helfer. Saints keep possession. Adams again, down low. Backhand chance into the mixer. The goaltender is taken out. He's back up, but the Saints betray themselves with a poor pass. That will allow fresh penalty killers for Illinois. Timer Prexler goes rink wide. Looking in for Edwards. Got just a bit of a deflection onto it, but Mazurik made the save. Timer Prexler just outside the circle. Goes down low. Deflected passes. Dorian's stick was right there. Shuffled it on the near side boards. Walked back by Tymon Prexler now from the dot. He takes the shot. Deflected. Edwards couldn't get the rebound. MacArthur keeps it alive. Far side for Adams. Cross ice pass. Tymon Prexler into the middle. Edwards. MacArthur. Slap shot. That goes wide. Edwards tried to saucer one way up through the air, but that ends up leaving the zone. 20 seconds left in the power play. 140 left in the period. T.J. Prexler in the corner. Dorian is on him. Prexler was trying to go back to the point. MacArthur takes the bouncing puck. Colt Corpse on the half wall. Dusts it off a couple times. Now gets it down low. That goes off the glove of Corpse. And that's a penalty killed for the Fighting Illini. Just out of the reach of Missouri, but he got a little bit on it to slow it down. Helfer fresh out of the box. Digs in along the corner boards. Now he's got it in behind his own goal. Almost lost his footing. Midlinski gets it up to the blue line, but not much further. Final minute of play here in the first period. Illinois 
does get that out, so it's a delayed offsides on the Saints. They quickly touch up. Illinois trying to find some sort of space through the middle. Only two shots on goal in this period. Corpse with a giveaway along the far side. Cobb turns around right into a Maryville player. The Saints hand it back. 31 seconds left. Off the dashers. But Reifke wasn't really looking for that. Alp slows it up. Banged around a couple times right near the Saints line. Back over to the red line. Cobb twists it in. Reifke trying to go in on the four check, but the Saints were quickly out. And they ice the puck with 4.1 seconds left in the first. bit slow to get up to the faceoff. Trying to talk things over. Obviously, they're hoping they can win this faceoff and get a quick shot on goal. They do win the faceoff, but over towards the near boards, and Maryville will just kind of kill off the rest of the period. A little bit of an extra bump there. Right at the end from Illinois, but the players will separate. And we've got 40 minutes left in this one. The Saints lead by a goal. Mueller has the score. And we will take a break. When we come back, we'll talk things over in your first intermission report. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. Treat you right, you'll see. I -E -S -P -E -C -T. Get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L O U F U S Z. Treat you right for 70. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money back guarantee and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right you'll see. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom.
Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it today, tomorrow, and into the future. MSHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Hogan Trucking, comprehensive transportation, straightforward solutions. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center as we're in the Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. Todd Panula along with you as the Saints lead the Fighting Illini by a score of one to nothing. Well, Obviously, the Saints would have loved to have a few more goals to go along with their offensive possession, but as of right now, they'll have to settle for just the one in between the pipes as they lead the Illinois Fighting Illini. But it was an overall very good period for the Saints as they basically dominated the time of possession overall. On that power play alone, I would say out of the two minutes that they had, I'd say a good minute 45 was spent in the offensive zone but Illinois has done a good job overall of limiting the chances that the Maryville Saints have gotten. The quality of chances that the Maryville Saints have gotten weren't necessarily what they would have liked overall, especially early on in that period. As I mentioned during the flow of play, it seemed like they were settling for a lot of shots from the dots on down. And eventually they started working the puck around. They started getting a little more scoring opportunities in some of the prime areas. But ultimately, Illinois was doing a good job of getting sticks in the lane and not allowing the Saints to have too much of what they wanted in that first period. But overall, the story with the one goal has got to be Logan Mueller getting his first goal in a D1 Saints uniform. He's been an offensive dynamo down at the D2 level. He gets the call up here this weekend as we see the play established and Mueller just using the defender almost as a screen against Missouri. He was able to sneak it in and get his first goal here for coach John Hogan. 
That was, as I mentioned, the only goal of the period. Thus, the score is one to nothing. The shots were 11 to two in favor of Maryville. As we take a look at some of the scores going on around the ACHA, we'll see what's going on elsewhere. Uh, Liberty and Ohio in a rather tight affair. One to one is the score there. Grand Valley is leading Western Michigan three to nothing. Central Oklahoma with a thin lead over Colorado one to nothing as the Buffalo are keeping things rather tight there. And Davenport leads Calvin by a score of three to two in the third period. We'll see if we can get more updates on those scores as we go along. But that will wrap it up for your intermission report. When we come back, we'll have the puck drop on the second period. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things deserve time. Coke with rich coffee for one very good reason. Your afternoon pick-me-up routine needed it. Simple as that. Coke with coffee. Past 70 years, Lou Fuse is called St. Louis Home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money back guarantee and exchange policy. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. 
compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? Twenty fours will live in your head. Thirty threes put in so many hours they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, thirty three? Clowns up, old man. Run it back. I said, run it back. Fifties. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Next! There's power in numbers. Take yours. Powerade. More power for 0 to 99, more power for me. MSHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Arco Construction, the design and build people. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. Just about set to drop the puck on second period as we have done so. It's one to nothing Saints. See if the Illini can get anything rolling on the offensive end as it was basically all Maryville in that first period. Teams have switched sides. Maryville coming in on the offensive end but Harrison couldn't hold on to the puck. Saints get it down deep again. 20 seconds and change played here in the first period. They were looking for McIlwain in the circle. Hunter's shot is knocked down. Bogdanoff gave it to Cobb who flung it in. He was apparently not on the correct side of the red line. So we have an icing call with 37 seconds elapsed. Illinois able to win the draw, but then it's given away to Adams. His shot from White on the near side point was knocked away by Cobb. Adams tried to do a pirouette and then center the puck. White steps up, takes down Cobb. Bogdanoff gets it out to center ice. White back at his own blue line. Cross the red line and then dumps it in. As Eric tried to set it up for himself to cover, Instead, the puck just kind of slipped away. Cobb tried to go rink wide, intercepted by Charche. That's not where you want to turn the puck over. Here's Adams, backhand chance, Mazurik the save, and then eventually he covers it up. 120 gone in the first period. Saints have a one to nothing lead.
On the round as Anderson clears the zone. It took a deflection, so no icing. Corpse is back, almost had his pocket picked. Saints can't get it out. Illinois calling for a penalty. They're not going to get one. Zurich comes out of the cage. Here's Edwards on the interception. Carries around towards the near corner. Anderson was trying to give him business. McLeod knocks that puck down off the glass. Twists it around for Cameron Ware. He was looking to set up Edwards. McLeod has it in the corner. Edwards down low. Off the boards to Bonnet. Cross ice pass now. Corpse putting it into the mixer. And that was deflected up by Anderson. Edwards kicks it. McLeod has it. Takes it towards the half wall. Now it's behind the cage. Edwards trying to avoid the defender. Edwards hands it off. Cameron Ware. Corpse is at the blue line. Cameron Ware splits the defenders. He just couldn't do too much with it. Too much pressure. Here's Edwards from the circle. Shot. Score! <laughs> Sam Edwards makes it two to nothing. Saints are rolling here in the second period. Edwards scores at 238 to double up the Saints lead. Stretch pass from Hunter looking for Lonesdale. Tracked down instead by Alp. Here's Mueller, guarded by two. Turcott had it for a moment. Fans trying to avoid the sticks, even though there's glass there, but can't say I blame them. When you're down there, even though you know that you have the protection, it's, it's always hard to not react. McDonald, over to McLean. Alp. Twists it around to the near side. Reifke got it into the zone, not much further. McDonald with an interception. Hunter repays the favor. Now here's Lonesdale, tosses it over the blue line, too far out of the reach of Turcott. Cobb couldn't get it out. Hunter flings it off the end wall. Corp steps up, but Illinois got it around. It's a foot race between Cobb and Hunter. Garrett Hunter puts it across. Near side for McElwain. A little too cute on the backhand pass. Gave it away momentarily. Corpse has it back at his own line. Deflected in by Harrison. Flutters towards the goal, and Missouri not taking any chances. 15.56 left to go here in the second period. Mueller and Edwards are your goal scorers. The Saints lead by two. Harrison McElwain and Prexler out on the ice for the Saints. Official doesn't like the jostling going in on the faceoff. Finally, Illinois is able to win it. Round to the near side. Cobb digs it off the boards, hands it off. Bogdanov skates up and then flings it in. Trying to chase down his own puck. Tapped it over too far for Midlinski. Harrison keeps it away, but right into the body of Midlinski. Harrison takes it back, crosses the red line and the blue on the attack. Pitch forks it in. Try to drop pass for Prexler. Harrison gets it back. Prexler at the end line to the dot. Cross ice. He was trying to find Spencer Turner. McElwain comes back to the half wall. Chip pass. Finds Turner. Corpse is calling for it. Instead, it goes to the circle, and Harrison's shot is wide. Harrison from the dot. Shot on. Mazurik the save. 15.07 left to go here in the second period.
Matt Deeb won the face off and Illinois will clear. This will go the length of the ice and we'll have an icing call with 5.01 gone. A lot of stoppages here in the second period for some reason. Had an icing. And a few other stoppages as well. Not too much flow, and the Saints actually only have two shots on, on goal. They got the second goal of the game on just their first shot here in the second period. Eddington tried to shuffle it in front. Coffey may have gotten just a touch on that one. We'll give him credit for it just because he hasn't had a whole lot to do here tonight. Centering pass, looking for Adams. And it goes way up in the air. MacArthur gloved it down. What do they call it here? Is it a hand pass? We have a stoppage, whatever it is, 14.32 gone in the period. And they're going to say that that one came out across the blue line. So offside is the call against the Saints. Adams wins the draw. Bonnet has it in front of the Illinois bench. Corps flings it on around. Floats over in behind the net. Adams chases. He's able to scrape it away. Slotty was set up. Adams took the shot instead. Bonnet on the puck. Just out of the reach of Charche as it trickles along the end wall. Looking for Zlati. Now he's broken a stick. Adams towards goal. That's knocked away by the blocker. Corpse with a shot. That one got through a little bit of traffic. And that will give an opportunity to the Zebras to pick up that broken stick. 13.56 to go here in the middle frame. Saints go with McLeod, Edwards, and Ware. They win the face off. Edwards along the near boards. He's able to backhand it up towards McLeod. Ware in the far corner. Dorian able to rub him out. McLeod in a battle now with Helfer. Ware came over. McLeod was there as well, but Illinois is able to steal it. Bit of a breakout attempt here. That was easily thwarted. Puck kind of rolled on Coffee there. Didn't allow him to get the clearance. But Illinois also lost one of their twigs, so. Oh, the goaltender came out. That's what the Maryville bench is complaining about, but they are still going to give them the icing call. Now they are gathered at center, so it will be a center ice faceoff, and that's probably the right call. It was kind of a mistake there by Ben Mazurik. Far side linesman, again, not too happy with the positioning of the wingers. Everybody kind of trying to pinch in there, and same thing on this one is Francesco Adante keeps trying to get a little too close. Scooped out Adante. Couldn't get it past the red line. Anderson can't get it out. Saints hold. Simon Prexler gave it up. Adante trying to skate around. The stick was lifted. Hunter got it up to the half wall, but no further. Shot goes wide. Simon Prexler skates it over the blue line. He's got Lonsdale in tow. Here's Garrett Hunter. Bueller was kind of in the way. He was trying to get out of the way, but they kept going in the same direction. Now we're going to get a whistle with 12.36 to go here in the second period.
kind of an awkward play there for Mueller, but also one of those things that um, nobody was really at fault, just when you haven't had an opportunity to play together too often, you're not used to those little intricacies of where a player intends to go. So MacArthur is uh, arguing that it should be at center ice. Instead, they're going to put it inside the Maryville zone on the faceoff. Illinois wins it, went right across the slot. But nobody there in orange. Now McLean comes up, tried to take it away from MacArthur. He gets it up to the red line. Illinois will take control. Far side for Reitzke. See it. Bumping is uh, picking up in intensity for both teams. You like to see it. The neutral fans always like the physicality, as do fans of each individual team. But for Maryville, it's one of those situations where uh, we get a stoppage here. And they're going to have a cross checking call behind the play. Jackson White will go to the sin bin. That'll put the fighting Illini on the man advantage with 11.55 to go here in the first, uh, second period, excuse me. Illinois being outshot 14 to four, but now with an opportunity to cut this lead in half. We're gonna go with Matt Veeve, Bogdan off. And Anderson as the forwards. Eddingen is on the blue line, as is Helfer. Anderson in control of the puck. Eddingen here on the near side. Trying to get it into the bumper position. But ultimately, it ends up leaving the zone. Saints come out and pressure in the neutral zone. Eddingen hands it off to Anderson and given right back. Off the dashers into the zone, looking for Bogdanov. Instead, it's corpse along the near corner. He gets that one nicely out of the zone. Just beautiful on the clearance there. I thought for sure that was going to go into the netting and have a stoppage. But instead, it just ticked off the window. Here comes Bogdanov. Shuffled towards goal by Matt Veeb. He gets a little bit of a shove there from Corpse as he got too close to the goaltender. But we'll have a stoppage with uh, 114 left in the power play and 1109 left in the second period. Reifke will settle into the face-off dot for Illinois. He'll go against Harrison. Uh, Reifke didn't like uh, something, so he's going to kind of curl around, resettle in, wins the face-off. McDonald on it. Our side now for Dorian at the point. He gets the return pass. No shooting lane available. McDonald on the near side. Dusts it off. Dorian takes a couple steps in. Shot over the goal. Dante had to pitchfork that one along the wall. Saints grab it and they clear. 10.40 to go in the period, 45 seconds left in the power play. Dorian from behind his own goal. TJ Prexler is the lone four checker. McDonald skates up the near side and just kind of slips that one into the zone. McDonald pinches in. He's there with Matt Vive. Cobb comes over as well. Dante hoping that one will pop loose. It does, but he had it poked away. Dorian just blindly puts one towards goal. It's loose in the slot. Scramble for it. Cobb gets it on the edge of the circle. Here's Dorian. Straightaway point with Harrison in his grill. Dante. He is taken down hard. Beautiful check there from Hunter. Saints trying to spring Zlotty. Twice now, McDonald has disrupted that. Zlotty from the wing, cross ice to Harrison. It went off the shaft of his stick. Into the middle for Bogdanoff, but off the skates. Corpse plays it off the dashers. Again, too high on the stick for Harrison to get a good clean play on it. Zlotty hammers the brakes. 
Back in towards the circle. Harrison takes control. Drops it for Zlati. It's deflected back towards the point. Bonnet to Corpse. Bonnet again. Straight away, shot wide. Rebound chance. It just wouldn't settle for Charche. It was a little too far behind him. Otherwise, he would have had a great A opportunity. Now the Saints have killed things off on the penalty kill. Back to five on five. Now Coach Hogan will go with his normal line combinations. Adams, Lottie, and Charche. Held in by Bonnet at the blue line after the faceoff win. Charche drops it. Bonnet from the circle, leaves it. Adams, far point to Corpse. His shot was sticked away by the goaltender. Adams, his shot was knocked down. Zlati, his shot was blocked. Stretch pass intercepted by Adams. Into the zone now. Charche tried to split the defenders, but that's out of play. Off a stick, so it'll stay inside the zone. 8.43 to go here in the middle frame. Illinois trying to keep things tight defensively, but... You have to wonder how much they're going to be able to withstand with so little in terms of offense. But to their credit, they've only allowed two thus far. Coach Hogan taking more of a uh, traditional spot on the bench the last few games. We have become accustomed to seeing him in front of all the players, but last couple games he's been in behind. Still rather active, moving back and forth. That's a shot from the far point by Turner, was kicked away by a defender. White comes back, Turner gets the cross size feed in through the middle, Ware taps it. It escapes the Maryville circle at center. But Turner has it back in his own zone, Edwards now. From the wall, dangerous giveaway, here's Cobb. Edwards came back and got a piece of it. Turner skates up. Spencer Turner going coast to coast. Where to Edwards. One timer was set up, but it was just a little too slow, so he had to retain possession instead of getting a shot off. Edwards has it down low. Anderson was in defense position. Edwards spins around from the half wall, drags it all the way back to the far point. White with a wrister. Score! A seeing eye shot from Jackson White. Makes it 3-0 Saints. White was looking for a deflection in front. And unless it went off of a defender, he didn't get one, but he got something even better in terms of tickling the twine. So White gets the goal at 12.37. And it's three to nothing Maryville, Adante. Skates it into the corner. Hunter with the steal. Hunter over to Mueller. He steers it back. Time and Prexler to Turcotte. Near side off the wall for Lonsdale. Lonsdale into the middle. Oh, he had Turcotte there and it just rolled off the blade. Time and Prexler to the backhand, to the forehand. He got it as far as the hash marks, but couldn't do anything with it. A stick down along the goal line, knocked the pass away. Harrison gets it to Hunter. Slap shot attempted, no. Good little drag move. Prexler with a shot, that's knocked down by Dorian. Over towards the near side. Turcotte stepped up, as did Hunter, as they take care of business for the Saints. Six minutes and change. Left here in the second period. Saints have scored twice. 
Nifty little move from Lonsdale. We'll take it all the way down low. It's good to see the confidence of these two call-ups. Mueller's got the goal. Lonsdale has looked very confident in terms of his puck handling ability as that one took a deflection through, but Mazurik made the save on Corpse's drive. Clock stops with 5.43 to go in the period. Excuse me, that was Bonnet. I don't have any excuses for messing up the names here tonight. And you've got the red numbers on the white. I always had an excuse when they wore the black with the red. But sometimes as a broadcaster, you just get a little too far ahead of yourself. You think you see the certain numbers and call out the name and then all of a sudden it's like oh, nope, that's 73 not 77 offside was the call against Illinois 514 left to go here in the second period it's been a much I don't want to say slower paced period because the action has still been good in between the whistles but we've had a lot more stoppages in the second period of play If anything, that has benefited both teams because you haven't seen them uh, get caught up in those long line changes that sometimes happen in the second period. Adams goes rink wide. Charche is on it now. Adams in the corner, avoids the check, got the puck away. Zlotti from the near side circle. They go around the wheel. Charche tried to dump one in towards goal. Not sure if that one ever got through. Saints still trying to work it around. They were looking for White on the back door. Defensive stick denied that opportunity. Adams on the near side. On the outside hash marks. Zlotti takes it to the half wall. MacArthur at the near side point. Charche dumps it into the corner. Lottie comes over in the near side corner. Cycles it back, hands it off to Anderson. They don't play for the same team though. Illinois desperately trying to get a line change and the Saints got a little too quick as they come into the zone. We're into the front, almost deflected in with Helfer getting a stick to it. Bogdanoff was taken out as one of the Saints Got a little bit of retaliation as Bogdanov was uh, a big physical presence in the first period. So the Saints wisely got the number and took him out later, but now they're going to be shorthanded again as Atticus Helfer was tripped up. So the Saints will be down a man. And perhaps it was more of a a knee on knee contact. I thought it was a stick. But even though a helper is going to stay out on the ice, he's favoring that right knee. Luke McLeod is in the sin bin for the Saints. Maryville fans will obviously hope that he will serve the full two minutes. Any less than that means that Illinois has scored. 145 left in the power play, 315 left in the period. To the far side, Anderson taps it off the wall. Harrison chases it down. Corpse on the near side. Nifty pass through the legs, and TJ Prexler will clear. You know you're feeling pretty good when you have the guts to try that on a penalty kill. Eddington. Tried to go through the middle. Anderson was the intended target. Instead, it went rink wide and deflected off the boards in front of the Maryville bench. 112 lift in the power play. Illinois, once again, crossing paths with the Maryville bench. In comes 
helper. It's put in behind the net. Picked up by Hunter, and he will clear it just about the length of the ice. TJ Prexler putting on a little bit of pressure onto the goaltender. Now Chardier will get to it. He's going to try to possess it, but tapped it a little too far out of his own reach. Eddingen drops it off. Helfer, Eddingen again on the near wing. Rink wide, Cobb brings it into the middle. Finds a man on the near circle. And then the pass disrupted everything. As Illinois was starting to cook a little bit on the offensive end. Now here's a giveaway. McElwain comes in. Chartier was hauled down. No penalty coming. The shot in. Save made. With 15 seconds left on the Saints penalty kill. Shots are 22 to 6. So you do have to say that Illinois has been a little bit better in this period, but the Saints have still kept the clamps down. Only four shots again thus far through 18 minutes and 15 seconds. Harrison Edwards, Bonnet, and MacArthur are your penalty killers. Illinois wins the faceoff, though. They've got enough time to get one last push up the ice if they hurry, but they don't seem to have any urgency right now. Cobb comes over the red line, passes towards the blue. It's dumped in behind the net. And the penalty has been killed. Saints are two for two on the penalty kill. Fighting Illini have it back at their own blue line. Up through the middle. Cobb let it go. Coffey thinks it's icing. Quite frankly, it probably should be, but the near side linesman said no, and he's the only one that matters. Lifted off the near side boards, and here comes McLeod. Drop pass, he was looking for Edwards. And now, giveaway. Nobody's calling a penalty, I don't believe that. That was probably one of the most clear ones that we've seen. As a stick came in, took out the legs of Medlinski. And now after all of that, I believe Illinois is going to be shorthanded. Saints are going to have an offensive zone draw. Referee had his arm up in the air. Nobody's gone in the box, though, for Illinois. And nobody's opened the penalty box either. So it's kind of a in a wait-and-see mode. Illinois has only put four players on the ice. And I, I don't know if this is a bench miner or what's going on. The Illini have to put somebody in the sin bin. It's going to end up being Drake Niles Cox. So that was definitely a bench miner. So that almost certainly had to do with the fact that there wasn't a penalty called as Jacob Midlinski had daylight in front of him. And even though this is the Maryville Saints Hockey Network, I mean, that, I don't understand how that's not a penalty. I'd really love to get the uh, explanation from the referee. Does that look like a clear trip? But that's why Illinois is now shorthanded, is that one ricochets around a couple times and ends up covered up by Missouri. You have to figure that uh, Chad Castle was having a few words with the official cross that line. So the Saints with their second power play of the game, they're 0 for 1. And if you could put something against their game, you would probably put it on the special teams as in that first power play. They, they didn't look bad. They had a lot of puck possession, but they just weren't getting too much through. Now you do have to credit the Illini's penalty kill. Within this game, it's done the job, but overall in the season, it's not that great. 70.5% on the penalty kill. Anything below the 80s is not good at all. But there's 40 minutes in the books as we get a little bit of extracurricular activity after the whistle. I'm sure they're all just talking about where they're gonna go hang out later. Have some uh, Dr. Peppers and whatnot. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll discuss that second period of action and look ahead to the third. 
The intermission report is coming up. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you'll need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us, with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right, you'll see. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it. Today, tomorrow, and into the future.
MSHN Intermission Report brought to you by the following. Hogan Trucking, comprehensive transportation, straightforward solutions. And welcome back to the Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. The score is three to nothing after two periods of play as the Saints have really done a lot of damage on not a whole lot of offense in terms of actually getting shots through. Now that's taking nothing away from what they've actually accomplished in this game. They do have 22 shots on goal. That's 11 shots per period, and that is legitimately split up 11 shots per period, not just an average between the two periods. But overall, given the possession time and the time in the attacking zone that the Saints had, you just kind of got the feeling maybe they would be able to get a few more shots passed, but you have to give credit to the Fighting Illini. They're doing the best that they can out there. They're at, outmatched from a talent standpoint, but they're doing what they can. They're limiting shot opportunities. They're getting sticks in the lanes and doing what they can to eliminate some of the Maryville chances. But in terms of offense, it has been next to nothing for Illinois as they now have six shots on goal so two in the first period, four in the second period. It hasn't been a whole lot to speak of in terms of the offensive production from the Illinois Fighting Illini. We'll see what they have in store if they try to open things up a little bit in the third period or if it's more just about damage control. But right now, the focus for Maryville were the two goals that they got, and the first one came in the first three minutes, and it would be a goal by Sam Edwards as Edwards would get his eighth of the season. The Saints were able to cycle the puck around a little bit. Edwards just kind of dusted it off, got it in towards the face-off dot, and was able to beat the goaltender. That's probably one that uh, Missouri would like to have back, but from that kind of angle and that close, it's difficult to know where a shooter is going to put it because they could easily put it back across the slot looking for a backdoor play. Or, or something in a bumper position. Instead, Edwards went with the shot, kind of beat the goaltender on the near side, and that put the score at two to nothing. And then after that, the Saints would make it three to nothing later in the second period, as it would be Jackson White scoring at 12:37. White would pick up his fifth of the game, and it was just kind of an innocuous play, really. You see Edwards, or excuse me, uh, White, is over there along the far side of the board. It's just kind of tossed one in front. I believe he was actually looking more for a deflection play from Cameron Ware. Instead, that one got through clean. White picks up the goal, and the Saints have the three to nothing lead. They're going to go for more glory in the third period, and they have plenty of opportunities with the offensive firepower. When, you've get, when you had contributions from your defenders, and your bottom six forwards, you know that those opportunities are still gonna present themselves to the top guys here in the third period. Before we go back to break, let's take one more look at some scores from around the ACHA, as we've got some finals and uh, some late scores as well as Grand Valley has really opened things up against Western Michigan. Nine to nothing now the score in the third period. Ohio had initially taken a two to one lead over Liberty, but the Flames come storming back and take that one in overtime, defeating Ohio three to two. Uh, in the intermission, Central Oklahoma leads Colorado five to nothing. That one was one to nothing in the first period. So Central Oklahoma has really kind of opened things up. And in a final, Calvin doubles up Davenport by a score of six to three. So we'll take one more quick break. When we come back, we'll have the puck drop on the third period of play from the Maryville University Hockey Center. This is Maryville Saints Hockey.
the day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there <laughs> and they never tasted this good coke with coffee we blended coke with rich coffee for one very good reason your afternoon pick-me-up routine needed it. Simple as that. Coke with coffee. What you want. Lou Fuse has got it. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that with 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z. Every treat you right, you'll see. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you in that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas two. One, two, three, four, three, four, three, two, one. Twenty fours will live in your head. I'm on. Thirty threes put in so many hours they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, thirty three? <laughs> Thumbs up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. 50s. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Hey. There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for 0 to 99. More power for me. Back for the third period between the Fighting Illini and the Saints. Maryville still on the power play for another minute and five seconds. They start things off in the neutral zone after failing to retain possession in the offensive end. Simon Prexler brought it in, apparently offside. As he was trying to feed TJ over here on the near side. Some of the Maryville fans were initially hoping that that might be a 
tripping call and put them up five on three, but referees have been pretty consistent with their calls and non-calls. And Fans are never going to be overly happy with the officials, but consistency is paramount. Saints lead three to nothing, two goals in the second period. Mueller in the first. Edwards and White in the second. Saints looking for goal number four. Coffee goes back. Still 20 seconds left on the power play, but the Saints are changing, so that's going to force them backwards. TJ back in his own zone, gives it over. Corpse comes up. The Camel's up through the middle, just out of the defender's reach. Ware with a wrister. Lost some power on that, almost fooled Missouri. Power play is over, though, so both teams are 0 for 2 with the man advantage. Edwards slows it up, drags it back towards the half wall, hits the brakes. Stick handling along the hash marks. Bonnet has it some space uh, straight away, but instead they go back towards the slot for Edwards. It's been kind of an interesting night for Edwards this evening. He's looked very good, very calm stick handling, but the legs haven't quite seemed there but he's missed some time here lately one of the several saints who were kept out of the lineup for a little while but so perhaps that's playing into it a little bit still trying to get those legs underneath him Illinois has it but overall a pretty good game for Edwards That nobody's really made any kind of big mistakes for the Saints as another tripping call goes by the wayside. That's what's made this game somewhat interesting is the, the tripping non-calls. Now, the, the, again, the referees have been um, very consistent with what they've allowed to transpire. But you look at a lot of different levels of hockey and tripping is the main one that seems to be called by just about everyone, but that has not been the case here tonight. Saints somewhat trying in vain to get their goaltender his stick back. Ed Coffey's been without his paddle for, I'd say, a good 30 seconds of game time. We've kind of seen... Uh, that it's hard as this one will be called for an offside, which will allow Coffee to get his stick back. But overall, it's kind of hard to know when, when you're allowed to do something with it and when you're not. Because um, oh, I forget which game it was now, but there was an NHL game a couple days ago. It might have been a St. Louis Blues game. But, uh, they, they shot the stick towards the wall, trying to get it out of the way. But the puck ended up being over in that position. So the referees ended up calling a penalty for shooting the stick at the puck, which wasn't even really the intention. It just ended up happening. But you have to kind of wonder if uh, that might have entered into some of the Saints players' minds. And then obviously you're not allowed to hold two sticks at one time, so that's why you can't just pick up the paddle and give it to your goaltender. And again, that's one of those ones that I, I guess I understand you don't want to give somebody an advantage. But overall, I mean, how, how many times in a year does that happen, let alone in a game? But rules are rules. Saints have it in their own zone, but Lonsdale a little careless with the pass. Got away with it as the shot was knocked down. Turcotte ends up with the loose puck. Time and Prexler sets it up from behind zone goal. Hunter's in the far corner. Prexler's going to skate it up. Right through the gut and then flipped on in. 
Unsdale lowers the shoulder, gets around Anderson, smushed up against the glass. McLean got it out, but Tymon Praxler takes control. Bueller into the middle for Turcott. He settles it down again as they try to lift his stick. McLean couldn't get it out despite disrupting the pass back to MacArthur. Illinois still doesn't clear the zone. A blind wrist shot from Jackson White as he just fired that one in the vicinity of the goal. Turcott ties it up and ends up flung around to the far side, but the Illinois defenders lost his stick. Saints looking for an open man at the point. Said it's flopped up towards the half wall. In the neutral zone, it's Jackson White. A stick handle up, and now we're gonna get a penalty. Saints are gonna go back on the man advantage. Hooking will be the call against Illinois. Fourteen twenty-four left to go in the period. Into the box goes McLean. So right now the Saints have a zero percent on their power play. We'll see if they can push it up to just over thirty if they get a goal here. Clears it off the near side glass, and MacArthur goes back. Cross heights, Zlati skates it back to the near wing, picks up some speed. Around the four check of, or I seem to say the poke check of Metviv. Corpse. Slip that one in. Now Zlati back to the point. One time shot. Prexler is there, rebound chance, score! Power play goal for Maryville, and it's four to nothing. Chad McElwain picks up the garbage on the doorstep and scooped it on in. So the Saints get their power play numbers back up to a respectable level just with the one goal. McElwain on the power play at 6-13. The score is four to nothing. Mueller, Edwards, White, and McElwain are your goal scorers. Illinois intercepts right in front of their bench. Cobb comes into the zone. Poke check by White, and then White takes Cobb towards the middle of the ice. Turner almost got a little careless, but now we go tic-tac-toe. Lonesdale to the far side, and Mueller into the middle, trying to get it back to Turcott. He scores! Channeling his inner baseball player. Oh no, they're gonna wave it off and say it was a high stick. I'd love to get the refs to see the replay on that one because they're, I mean, maybe we would need to see it ourselves, but I have to say, I don't think that was over the shoulders. So it remains four to nothing. That one would have been a real feather in the cap for this fourth line, consisting of a Turcotte, Mueller, and Lonesdale. Here comes Jackson White. Lonesdale in the slot, shot, stick, save. Lonesdale picks up the loose puck in the corner. Turcotte in front, off the shoulder. Diamond Prexler pushes the reset button as he sends it back to Hunter. Here's side it comes to Timon. He'll skate it up, cross ice. Edwards flings it around. Here's McElwain. Down low for TJ. TJ Prexler 
to McElwain, Tyman, and it kind of rolled on him out to the neutral zone. Matt Veeve stepped up, didn't get the man or the puck. Harrison tried to twist it in. Matt Veeve comes in on the offensive end. He's around TJ Prexler. Matt Veeve from behind the goal, and he is leveled by Garrett Hunter. Matt Veeve is down. Hunter is heading to the box. At this point, you have to wonder how much time is going to be up on the clock. Illinois is going to get its fourth power play of the game. As Hunter only had eyes on the body check. And that's one of those plays that I, I think it's not necessarily the hit in and of itself that was dangerous, but Matt B wasn't expecting Hunter to come in because he already knew that there was a defender on him. You don't usually expect that second one to come in, especially with such force. But it is just a two minute penalty against Garrett Hunter. So the Illini will try to break their deadlock. Yep, they've taken that time off the clock, so I wonder if they're altering it. 11.51 is how much time is left in the period, and they are going to make that a five minute major. So Illinois is going to get a full five minute power play. Shot from distance, blockered away. Here comes Helfer again. His shot was blocked. Now it's a race, Helfer and McLeod. Helfer just gets there first. Helfer's all the way back at his own goal line. Here's Anderson, cross ice. Saints intercept and Corpse will clear it down. Illinois back in their own end. Not quite a minute gone in the five minute power play. McElwain back at his own goal line. He'll fire at the length of the ice. So Illinois still with 3.35 left to go on the power play. 10.25 left in the period. Saints up by four. Maryville's done a very good job on the penalty kill thus far. Not just on this particular one, but overall in the game as Illinois is 0 for 3 thus far. They do wall it off on the far corner. Bonnet slams it up the near side. Dorian is able to hold it in. Adante couldn't quite settle it down as it was bouncing around his mitts. The Saints send it out. Dorian back in his own zone. Intercepted Harrison to McLeod. And he went into the hornet's nest. Adante fell over the stick. Again, no call on the trips. Nope, they are going to call it this time. It's the referee inside the Saints zone. So he's about 100 feet away from that play. He makes the call instead of the official that was right there. And myself, along with several other broadcasters, so it doesn't really matter what team you're talking about, but fans don't like it. Broadcasters don't really like it. The, the official that's the furthest away, I mean, unless it's just something super egregious, it doesn't seem necessary for them to be the ones to make that call. And the other one seemed like they were in a good position. Nevertheless, Illinois 
will get their fifth power play. Right now they have a five on three power play for a full two minutes because Hunter is still in the box for another 240. Nine thirty is what's left here in the third period. The officials kind of talking things over, but right now the reason we have the stoppage is there was a timeout taken by the University of Illinois. So they're trying to square things away. They they want to get this zero off the board. I think that's their main goal for the rest of this game. But that's obviously easier said than done because they came into this period with six shots. They now have seven. So despite the fact that they've had a uh, two minute and 20 second power play thus far in this period. They haven't managed to get a shot on goal. One timer from the far side, score! Eddingen gets that zero off the board and McLeod will come out of the penalty box. As Illinois strikes on the five on three power play. So Illinois is now one for four. And they're still in the midst of their fifth power play. Now Eddington gets the goal at 10.37 with the man advantage. Now the lead is still down to three. Anderson from the corner. McElwain comes over and tries to spike it away. Corpse takes down Bogdan off, rink wide it goes. Matt V peels it back towards the front of the zone. Anderson does the same. Helfer goes to the far side. Eddigan loses his footing and now it's a two on one. Short handed, here's Harrison. He comes in, Harrison with the shot, nibbles off the glove. Just couldn't get space to find Cole Quartz. Kurtz had that go awkwardly off the backhand, so now we're back out into the neutral zone. 1.30 left in the Garrett Hunter penalty. And as we mentioned, he's got to serve that full five, so that's why McLeod was able to come out of the box, even though his penalty was the uh, second of the two. And normally the first one comes out of the box, but not when it's a major. Charche almost with an interception. Dorian having to use his strength advantage to keep the feisty little Maryville forward just away from that puck. Otherwise, he would have had a real good look towards goal. On it comes around and spikes it off the glass. That will go the length of the ice. 7.30 left to go here in the third. Illinois comes up the middle, Helfer, cross the line, and now Eisenman was the one that blew the whistle. Do we have too many men? The Maryville trainer came over, so I, there might have been some sort of urgency and I say, I say urgency, not emergency, over on the Illinois bench, but there is going to be a penalty. And Francesco Dante will be the one to serve it, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be too many men. So that is a huge mental error that will take away the advantage for 28 seconds, and then Maryville will have another power play. Well, they work it around to the near side. Shot, score! A power play goal for the Maryville Saints. 
And I believe it's going to be credited to Lonesdale. Mueller was slow to get up after he took a punishing hit. But ultimately it'll be worth it. As the Saints fourth line has struck again. So talk about a heck of a debut for a couple of these players. Mueller got the goal in the first period. And unless they change the scoring, which uh, that's kind of why I'm waiting. The officials are want to do sometimes. So they so now they've got to settle up the, the clock situation because the uh, the scorekeeper accidentally took off the penalty against Illinois, but that is a four on four goal. So Lonsdale gets his first goal for the D1 Saints. So what a debut for both of those freshmen. Now the Saints are on the man advantage for a minute and 25 seconds. Lonesdale, a freshman out of Chesterfield, Missouri, as is Logan Mueller. Lonesdale coming from the Pittsburgh Vengeance, whereas Mueller coming straight in from the Chesterfield Falcons, a team that shares their home rink right here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Now Corpse dusts it off, gets it straight away. MacArthur comes over to the near circle. McElwain drops it, tried to get it to Corpse. MacArthur goes far side. Zlotty with the shot. Goaltender made this save, couldn't control the loose puck. Illinois trying to send it out, and they will. So the lead back to four. Mueller, Edwards, White, McElwain, and Lonesdale, the goal scorers for the Saints. Eddington, the lone goal scorer on the power play for Illinois. Here comes Edwards. Off the dashers to Tymon Prexler. He walks the line. Far side, White, rink wide. Edwards was the intended target. Cameron Ware. Ran out of time on the power play. Here's McLeod, drops it off. Timer Prexler, slapper, deflected by Edwards and wide. Held in by McLeod. He'll toss it into the near corner. Ware just doing some boxing out. That would have been a good player if you were going for a basketball rebound. But we get a stoppage with five minutes exactly left here in the period. Hunter flings it on around. It's guided back to the point. Bonnet to Hunter. He tries a shot that was blocked. Illinois will clear it. This one will not be an icing call. Bonnet forced it up the near side. And this will be an icing call against the Saints coming the other way. 439 left to go. It's Coach Hogan not too pleased with the Saints taking an icing in that scenario. <laughs> Illinois did a pretty good job on the faceoff dot here this evening. Matt Veed got a stick up high. No call. Eddington took his man over towards the turnbuckle. But no collision. Four 
422 left as we've got a stoppage inside the Illinois zone. Illinois takes control off the faceoff. Turner tried to pinch in to keep it alive. Couldn't quite do so. Mueller had it stripped away. Shot by Cope goes wide. And again, Coffey lost his stand somehow. It came right around the net, right back to him. He lost it from his vantage point. He lost it on the near side post. Somehow that puck, or, uh, the stick ended up over towards the far post, and he was able to pick it up. Turcott has it in, but he's offside. So we get another stoppage with 3.53 to go here in the third. Saints will roll another line change. As we inch closer to the end of this contest. Adams wins that one cleanly. MacArthur with a give and go with White. Adams lifts the stick. Able to pilfer it away from McDonough. Here's Charche. Tried to put it into the mixer. Adams was driving towards the slot. Illinois will clear it down. MacArthur goes across the ice. Saints can't connect to Zlati at the red line. Alp for Illinois. Pilfered away. Charche trying to chase it down. A long shot from White goes wide. MacArthur holds it in. Cycles it down low to Adams. He'll shuffle it along, and Zlotti picks it up off the wall. Illinois got it up to the blue line, but no further. Charche with a nifty little play. He'll drive towards the middle, and now we've got a whistle behind the play. I believe it's going to be another penalty against Maryville. No signal from the referee as to what it was. They're kind of talking things over. Well, I can't say I know what that was. The <laughs> referee just literally made an ax chopping motion. I, I mean, normally I would assume that he would just call that a slash, but I, I guess... Uh, I guess that's a separate penalty if you literally use your stick as a an X. We'll try to keep an ear out for the PA announcement. Nevertheless, whatever it is, Illinois with the sixth power play of the game. So that's not going to make Coach Hogan that happy that his team has been that undisciplined especially in a game that they've pretty much had in hand since the first period, even though it was only one to nothing. Two thirty-two left to go, one thirty-five left in the power play. Harrison trying to chase it down, Eddington is there. Illinois starts from their own goal line. Over here to the near side for Matt Beeve. He'll just Brush it on in. Saints get control. McLeod handed it off. And it's cleared out by the captain. Back the other way comes Helfer. He'll drop it off the wall. Eddington was there. He takes it from Matt B. Far side it goes to McDonough. Tough angle chance. Turned away by Coffey. Illinois has it, 40 seconds left in the power play. So they bring it out, they try to, now it's taken back. Back going. Lost it momentarily. Somebody's also lost their stick along the near side, just off the camera reaches, it's along the boards. 
Now McDonough has taken down hard as he's in a tussle with Hunter. Hunter's lost his stick. He went after Cobb as well. Dorian brings it back in, trying to work it around McElwain. 105 left to go, and now a save made by Coffey. He was trying to play that cross-ice pass, and then it was redirected on the way through. Luckily for him, he was sweeping that trail leg across and had it sealed against the ice. Sixty-one seconds remain. Dorian has it in the final minute. A misplayed by Mueller. He regains it. Turcotte has it. Let me just collar that one around. Now here's Bonnet Here with a wrist shot. That ends up going wide. Turcotte back to Bonnet. Cross ice it goes. Corpse with a shot. That's knocked down. Zurich will cover it up with 18.1 seconds left. So with the win, the Saints are going to improve to 18 and 10. Just as important, they will pick up their eighth win here at home. It's been kind of a back and forth year in terms of the home ice performance from the Saints. Only two games above 500. And the best they could finish is three games if they can win tomorrow. But that one is still up in the air. This one was long decided. The Saints are victorious. Five to one is your final score. As they get two more goals here in the third period, Ed Coffey does not get his fifth shutout of the year, but he'll take the victory. And as I mentioned, the Saints pick up their eighth win here on home ice, 18th overall for the season. So we'll step aside. When we come back, we'll give you our final breakdown of this contest. The Saints are victorious. This is Maryville Saints Hockey. Hello, America. This is a message for the brave people who want to get a degree online on top of all the other things going on in their lives. The higher education system is broken. 75% of Americans say it's easier to succeed with a degree, but only 25% think the education system is fine the way it is. Something's not right. Here at Maryville University, we've been bravely disrupting the higher education system for nearly 150 years by putting students first, not the other way around. And now we're bringing it online. We believe education is not just about earning a degree, but about pursuing and achieving your dreams. That's why we develop programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. The future belongs to the brave. Let's be brave together. Be brave and learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. Hello, America. And welcome back one final time here to the Maryville University Hockey Center as the Saints are victorious, five to one over the University of Illinois. It was basically domination from start to finish as the Saints got the opening goal of the game back at 12.51 of the first period. And that was kind of the story of the game with the fourth line really doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this contest with Logan Mueller scoring. That was his first goal of the season here at this level. And it would basically be all Saints from then on out as we wrap up the score line. Edwards got his eighth of the season at 238 in the second period. It was a three to nothing score with White picking up his fifth of the year at 1237. McElwain would score on the power play at 613 of the third period. Eddingen would score for Illinois on a five on three power play, basically right off the face off. Illinois just took a shot that Ed Coffey had no chance on. He just didn't have enough time to get set up and see that puck. So that took away the shutout. Otherwise it would have been a perfect night for Maryville. 
as Lonesdale put the icing on the cake, getting his first goal in a D1 Dogs uniform, uh, picking up a four-on-four -four goal at 12.51 of the third period. So interestingly enough, uh, that's kind of a coincidence that Mueller and Lonesdale end up with goals at 12.51 of the first and third periods. But overall, an excellent performance for the Maryville Saints. They got the job done that they needed to do. Obviously, number one, they wanted to pick up a win. Number two, you want to get that goal differential up. You end up winning by four, so they got that job done. They would have liked to have the shutout, couldn't get that done, but th that's the way that the sport rolls overall, and it just was domination from start to finish. They only allowed 10 shots on goal, so Ed Coffey does get his save percentage for the evening up to 90% as he had nine saves on 10 shots. So from a goaltender's perspective, he's gotta be happy about that as it was just kind of a difficult night for coffee overall when you don't have hardly any work to show. Sometimes it's difficult to come up in those big moments, but as I said, not too much of a chance for him to make any kind of save on that shot. It was a seeing eye shot, well placed on the power play goal, but the Saints get the offensive job done here this evening and they are victorious looking forward to tomorrow i will be on the call once again as it will be a 5 15 puck drop so if you're not in town we hope that you will tune in to that if you're in the area go ahead and stop by it is going to be senior night as we will honor the maryville saints who will be playing their final home game in a red and white uniform for everybody here, for Eric Skelton, making us look good behind the scenes, I'm Todd Panula. Have a great night, Saints fans. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network